here with more from our big borders, our very own Bill Hammer. Bill, uh, the problem is the bombing is not stopped, and the other problem is the fire is ongoing. Three of the six reactors are active, and we don't know the status of the other three. What yeah. can you tell us? Sean, good evening to you. I just, um, I'll just break down the last 12 hours of this war and kind of give you a sense of where we are. And I think there's, I think there's really three stories at the moment, uh, two of them happening here in the south, one in the north. Let's go to the story at the moment, and that is that nuclear power plant. It's in the a town of Inahodar, okay, so we're in the southern part of the country. Uh, this is the giant, massive Dnieper River that really cuts the country uh, in two, Sean. This is, again, this is a flat country. Uh, it's largely um, farmland. Uh, I mean, it must be beautiful during harvest time, but not this time of year. This is Inner Hodar that sits right on the Dnieper River, that nuclear plant that now is in question. Apparently, battles happening around it. Uh, that is story number one. Now, why is this taking place? In part because the Russian military came out of Crimea relatively untouched, I would argue. And so they made a beeline to the east, but they also went west earlier today. Now, we have some video that we rolled earlier this morning. I think we've got it queued up now, Sean. There is a road that leads into this nuclear power plant, and there are, I mean, you can see it here. Uh, we watched it this morning on America's Newsroom. I, 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 this is hundreds? Is it thousands of people? These are civilians from the nearby town that are intending to block the Russian military from moving toward the power plant. I mean, it, it was an extraordinary sight. These are people who live there. Uh, so that, that, that's story number one. Now, here's story number two, and that is, what is the Russian army doing? Where are they successful? And they largely have been successful in the south. So they come out of Crimea. They make a beeline over here. This is Mariupol. Now, w what's the significance of this town? About a half a million people, um, Ukrainian-controlled, the Russians were not able to take it. That war eight years ago. And there is a fierce battle that's been going on for the last three days with the Russian military firing from the Sea of Asaf and also from the land above it. Uh, but we don't believe that town has fallen to the Russian military yet. Uh, that battle continues. Over here to the west, remember the Dnieper River comes down? This is Kyrgyzstan. Trey was talking about this uh, a moment ago. We believe that is the one town in the country that has fallen to the Russian military thus far. The mayor confirmed that a bit earlier today. So now you start to see the, the swath of land that Putin's going after, all southern Ukraine, trying to get the land bridge from the territory he took in 2014 and link it, cut off all the access from the Black Sea to the rest of the country of Ukraine. What would be the target next? In all likelihood, it would be the town of Odessa here in the West. A million people, Sean, one of the top five population centers in the entire country. Uh, that could be the target next. Some reporting earlier today suggested that uh, the Russian military is moving on. That, that might be the case. Uh, perhaps, you know, it's 9 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning there in, in Ukraine. And maybe by daylight tomorrow we have more information on this. So that's happening in story one and story number two. Story number three, I think, is also significant. That's what's happening in the north. To talk with all of, listening to our defense officials talk today and trying to get some reporting on the ground. We believe this is as far as the Russian army has been able to advance from the north and the northeast. And we believe, based on the reporting we're getting, that this effort has been largely stalled out. Um, Jack Keane was talking a bit earlier today about the mix and match of soldiers that have come in from the north, units that have been taken from different parts of the country that never fought before together, uh, have poor communication with each other, and as a result, that's being reflected in their lack of ability to proceed um, on, the, on the capital city of Kiev, which is different from the south because you have units down there that have been established now for eight years, again, going back to 2014. Uh, so we'll watch that story here and see whether or not Putin's army can get its, well, can get something together in the north. And if they can, then we're going to see some more news probably on this convoy that hasn't moved either. And the, here's the center part of Kiev. And uh, this is the airport. We showed you this uh, night or two ago. And there's a road that runs up this way about 40 miles. And that convoy basically has not moved. What's the intent? Well, Putin told Macron earlier today that he still wants to take over the entire country. But to do it, he's going to have to take the capital city. And it is still believed by leading defense officials that he would circle this town and probably just bomb the daylights out of it like we've seen in other parts of Ukraine uh, and try to get the people to concede. 
Uh, one of the towns that's really just uh, taken some heat is the town of Kharkiv. Sean, I've talked about this in the Northeast. One and a half million people, uh, Russian-speaking city, uh, just about 20 miles from the, the border with Russia here. And they pretty much have this town surrounded. It has not fallen. They have not surrendered. They have not capitulated to Russia, the Russian army. But uh, Kharkiv is really, uh, they've had a couple of really, really tough days there. The other story is going to develop over time, and th these numbers are only going to go higher by the day, and that's the number of refugees that are flooding the rest of Europe. We're now about a million, you're at five, or half a million in Poland, 133,000 in Hungary, Romania is 51,000, others, what, 88,000 there. So this number is at a million and climbing by the day, Sean. So that, that's yeah. where we believe we are as of this hour. All right. Thank you. Our very own Bill Hemmert. Very informative, as always. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.